Hey, what's going on everyone? Matt Jarbo here with Three Buck Theater. And you know, a couple of years ago, it's been about it's been about three years now since the the live action remake of Beauty and the Beast stormed into theaters and grossed over a billion dollars in a March release. That is almost unheard of, unless you're Disney and you're doing a live action remake of something because Alice in Wonderland from 2010 did the exact same thing. But when it comes to Beauty and the Beast, where else would you take the story? It's kind of a one and done sort of thing. It ain't like Aladdin where they have reference material to where they take the story after the fact, even though it doesn't really need it considering how the movie ended, but they're doing it anyway because Disney likes money. But the reason why I've got Luke Evans as Gaston on the screen is apparently today this is, this is, this is happening. Uh, Beauty and the Beast prequel series at the works at Disney Plus. Yeah, 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 Beauty and the Beast prequel series at work with, with at Disney Plus. What? Um, I wish I was, uh, I wish this wasn't true. I wish I wasn't making this up. I wish this wasn't a reality, but it very much is. Uh, let's find out more. It says here that uh, stars Josh Gad and uh, Luke Evans will reprise their roles from 2017 feature for a limited series from Once Upon a Time creators Eddie Kit Kitsis and Adam Horowitz, with Gad also down as co-creator, writer, and showrunner. This is a Gaston and LeFou are getting an origin story. So Gaston and LeFou are getting an origin story. And uh, why? I mean, I'm legitimately asking you that question. Why? At what point in time do you ever really care about the story of Gaston and Lefou? I don't care. I grew up watching Beauty and the Beast. I love the animated movie. The, the live action one I felt was wholly unnecessary. It was like, it was a spectacle. It was okay, but it was like, come on, man. Like, I'll go back and I'll watch the original. There's really no need for this, as I feel, in most live action remakes that Disney's been doing. But then again, they pulled in lots of money. So, you know, whatever, man. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, is that this is, this is a dumb idea. I mean, there's no better way to describe it. This is an absolutely stupid stupid idea but you can tell that disney is in a very interesting situation which we're going to talk about that but let's finish up what this is right here so according to the article the unlimited uh, the untitled series will be a six episode musical event with composer alan menken and talks to return as well sources say the project which is currently in the early development stage will take place well before the events of the film and also expand the beauty and the beast universe no other stars from the film like emma watson or dan stevens are currently attached though sources say there is a possible Possibility that they could pop in for a guest spot. Why? Why? Like, why? I just, I mean, okay, <laughs> let's, let's actually kind of break this down. So for one, Josh Gad is kind of attached to many of Disney's very popular franchises. Okay. So he is Olaf and Frozen. Uh, he is going to be playing the older uh, Rick Moranis' son in, in the uh, in the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids sequel series that's coming to Disney Plus, in which case Rick Moranis is going to be reprising his role, which is cool that he'll do it for that, but not Ghostbusters. I don't want to get into that right now. But anyway, uh, and then he's got this one. He's, he was in Beauty and the Beast and LeFou was a fun character. I did enjoy Josh Gad quite a bit uh, as LeFou in the live action. Um, and, and again, why? This is like the Scorpion King. Remember that whole thing? Remember Mummy Returns from 2001 where we get to see The Rock as a really terrible CGI scorpion, half man, centurion, centurion hybrid sort of thing, right? We saw that, you know, it was like, oh, okay. And then, then a couple years later, they, they came out with the Scorpion King prequel movie where he was the good guy. The Acadian was the good guy. And then he ended up, you know, getting a couple sequels, not with The Rock, but with some other British actor. And he was leading down the pathway of becoming the Scorpion King and getting us to the storyline that would tie in with The Mummy Returns. So obviously showing his fall from grace. Okay, fine. Luke Evans is charismatic. He is a very good actor. Josh Gad is a lot of fun in the right role as a kind of comedic sidekick. But do you really want to see a Gaston prequel movie? Ah, we went to the war. I came home. I don't care about any of that stuff. It's because it's, it's, when, you, when you watch Beauty and the Beast, you don't watch Beauty and the Beast for Gaston. You don't watch him for Gaston. You don't watch it for LeFou. It's, I mean, they're funny bits in the movie. Gaston is the bad guy and he dies in the end. So you already know his fate. You already know what's going to happen. It's kind of like, I mean, you can, some people might argue, oh, this is very similar to the prequels. This is very similar to Star Wars prequels because, oh, it's the rise of Anakin and then we get to see the fall of Anakin. 
Yeah, but Gaston ain't that kind of iconic character. You know what I mean? Like, like a- everyone I know who grew up watching Beauty and the Beast, I've never talked to anyone who's been like, you know, I really want to know more about that Gaston fellow. His his chin was mighty clefty, and uh, he had a way with the ladies, and I'm pretty sure he did some pretty cool things with hunting and whatnot, but I really want to dive into that story. You don't. No one does. So let's talk about why this is happening. Okay, for one... Uh, Eddie Kitsis and Adam Horowitz are also tied to Disney through a lot of other shows uh, and a lot of other programs. They did Once Upon a Time. They did Lost. They they very much are in that particular camp, and they're probably having trouble getting certain things off the ground. Disney is also at a point right now where they don't have content, really, for Disney Plus outside of their core library. And as a father of two, believe me, I we watch Disney Plus on the daily. Right. We watch Disney Plus every single day. I think even right now they're watching Monsters, Inc. or Monsters University or any one of the Toy Stories that I have now seen 100 extra times in the last couple months. But ultimately, they don't have a lot of new content. Right. There's like a couple new shows here and there, but they're not really gripping. Nothing's really gripping like The Mandalorian was. And The Mandalorian is Star Wars. And that's a totally different ballgame. But they need content. And, you know, they're doing, like I said, the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids reboot or sequel series. They're doing a Home Alone thing on there they're rebooting that for disney plus they're rebooting all these other programs for disney plus and they need stuff to fill the air right they need things to fill the air and so this is just a filler this is a limited event six episode musical story of gaston and lefou being the heroes of a war only to come back to their village and then to die a grisly death falling from a very large height while trying to track down the beast and then also it's going to expand upon the beauty and the beast beast mythos Again, I I mean, like, I don't, isn't that kind of the whole point that like no one believed it was real? Like no one believed that was the case. It was like, it was, it was myth. It was legend. It was lore. Yes. It's just, I mean, is it like, what is it? Like uh, a Snow White and the Huntsman from 2011, you know, like that one, they tried to beef it up a bit. Like, you know, King Arthur from 2017, it's been described as like the Witcher, but live action. And now we actually have the Witcher, which is amazing. And I love it. And it's dope. But this just feels to me like it's so unneeded, so unnecessary and, and just and just com- wasteful of people's time and Disney's resources that could be going for something that's more original. We don't need we, it's, it's like there. I mean, I, I know they want to play up like the villain side of things because Maleficent. This is it's, Maleficent. Okay, that's a prime example as well. They did Maleficent back in 2014. It came out. It did really well. Surprisingly, it was a god awful movie. I don't even know why it did well, but it was it was a god awful film. So they said, you know what? Five years later, let's do a sequel. They did a sequel and it tanked. It tanked. No one saw it. Why? Because it was a god awful movie but they're doing a Cruella DeVille movie starring Emma Watson as Cruella. We've already had two live action 101 Dalmatians with Glenn Close as Cruella, which made sense because they were live actions and Pongo and Perdita in the in the puppies were the main characters of the story. And Glenn Close, even though she had an expanded role as Cruella, was still not the main character in the movies, even though she did have like the vast majority of the marketing. It's... <sighs> I feel like Disney Plus is backing themselves into a corner creatively and they're literally just going to be like Netflix was in like 2012 where literally you could just call up them and go, I have an idea for a show and they're going to go greenlit. They're in a race against Apple Plus or Apple Apple TV. Uh, they're uh, Quibi, which launches April 6th, I believe, with 50 shows. Uh, Netflix, obviously. Hulu, which is it, even though Hulu is owned by them effectively it's still a competitor you know it's still a competition uh and there's all these other services that are out there hbo max is coming peacock is coming they are in a mad rush to fill it with as much content as they can because they're afraid people are gonna leave and not pay the seven dollars a month i'm just gonna be honest with you here i'll give you guys a quick little side story so i did a video about two months ago talking about how I'm probably going to have to cancel Disney Plus because it's eating up my data like you wouldn't believe, right? And the truth of the matter is it was. It was eating my data, but I figured out how to turn off the 4K on my television, which then just auto defaults the display or the resolution down to 1080 and I'm perfectly fine. My sister, on the other hand, same problem. And instead of doing what I did, which she didn't, her and her boyfriend decided to call up the cable company and then move to an unlimited bandwidth stream for a lot more money per month 
So it's like they're paying out more money when they don't need to be. And the reason why I say that is because $7 a month to parents is nothing. That is fine. Their kids can watch whatever they want to watch. All right. And this is what it's for. Don't pull the cart before the horse. Take the time, plot out the content, and don't do dumb things like this that are going to ultimately just feel like a waste of time and a waste of money because people aren't going to care about Gaston. Now, if you're asking yourself, Matt, are you going to go and watch this and review this? The answer to that is yeah, probably. <laughs> I'll be fair. I'll be fair. I'll check it out. I'm criticizing it now, but I'll, I'll, I'll still check it out. I just think it's a dumb idea. Nothing about this is going to blow my screwed up, but... I do like Josh Gad as LeFou, so th there is that, you know what I mean? Like, there's enough there to get me in the door. And I did enjoy the first few seasons of Once Upon a Time, once it kind of sorted itself out. So we'll see. And I do like Alan Menken's work. So there are elements of this that are good, but I do think that the overall, some of its parts are kind of lame. Individually, it's cool, but together, it's what the hell's the point? Anyway, uh, your thoughts on this, your opinions on this, let me know down in the comments below. I will uh, talk to you guys later. Do me a solid and type in... Uh, uh, type in Gaston in the comment if you guys made it this far. If you made it through that whole rant, I appreciate it. If you guys want to support the channel, as little as $2 a month, membership is below in the video description, which would be great for uh, badges for when you comment, as well as when I do live streams. Trust me, those are coming. You can also go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Theater. Jump in on the action there. I'll talk to you all later. Have yourself a great day and peace out.